All right. Three, two, one. Hello. Uh, hello. <laughs> Welcome, we're, everybody. We're back again. We're back again. Uh, welcome to another episode of No Conditions. I'm Monica, and I'm with the wonderful Mrs. Vicki Wackerman. Hello. Hello. How are we? <laughs> We're good. This is take two. Yeah. Uh, the first one we decided not to do, um, and uh, ex- explain what, well, what, what you think. Okay, well, I came in last week, and we were promoting the Fireman's Ball. We were promoting the shop shop hop that was going to be going on downtown Mm -hmm. and um with the coronavirus a lot of those things have been canceled yes so pretty much everything we talked about we cursed it and it's canceled now (laughs) it's our fault it's our fault (laughs) yeah but you guys are supposed to have a um you guys are supposed to have a a shop hop where all the um antique stores were going to get together and Right. Kind of do a raffle. Right. And um, it's still going to go on. It's not going to be until later in April. Mm -hmm. Um, The stores that are participating are Bless Your Heart Mercantile, Farmhouse Vintage, Rusty Wagon, um, Auntie's Attic, our store, Mm -hmm. uh, which is the Pick and Chicks, and The Hive, and Orland Florist, and Mm Brews. So... When that comes around, we'll we'll heavily advertise so everyone can know when when it's happening. Um, yeah, and each store donated a gift basket, and it's all going into one big basket mm-hmm. that's going to be a grand prize. So I don't know how much it's valued at. I know that the one that we gave was valued at two hundred dollars. Oh wow. Yeah. So you get that many people together, and then it's, yeah. it's going to be a pretty good. What well, it was it was kind of sad because um, bless your heart is the one that's that's running it, and we all advertised for it, and she had on the event thing almost six hundred people that were either Aww. going or were interested. Mm-hmm. So hopefully those people will still be interested yes. in a month or six weeks, but. With everything that's going on right now, it's just best. It's just best to yeah. to stop and and not not focus on you know business right now and mm-hmm. focus on the community and trying to keep everybody healthy. So. For sure. Well, it's kind of a you know like we were talking earlier. It's kind of a damned if you do and damned if you don't type right. thing. If you stay right. open, you kind of you don't want to be those people that didn't right. heed the warning and then right. everyone get infected and then. Well, you know, we were going to be open this weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday um, at the Pick and Chicks, and so were all of the other vintage stores. Mm-hmm. Um, but one by one, we all decided to, you know, maybe this is not the best time yeah. to be open. Um, and, you know, it was a hard decision to make because I'm, you know, my partner Tanya and I are usually not one of those that fall into this whole mass hysteria, yep. you know, doomsday prepping and all that and we would have liked to have been open still but in reality it's not my job it's not my only job no it's not how I pay my bills um our vendors we talked to them you know about it before ahead of time and it's it doesn't really supplement their income it, it does a little bit I mean like you know what money they make they can you know take their family out to dinner and go to the movies or pay for their youth football or their daughter's or son's dance lessons or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't something that was worth staying open for um, just because we wanted to sell something. Yep. You know, so if it was, if some of these, some of our vendors were counting on that money, we would have um, stayed open for them. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we talked to them and... They pay rent on a booth, and they're guaranteed that we're open two, three-day weekends for that month for Mm -hmm. their, you know, for them paying their rent. So we just talked to them and said, you know, hey, we only are going to be open, you know, last weekend. We aren't going to be open the rest of the month, so um, next month we're only going to charge you half a month's rent. Awesome. And they were great with that, so Mm -hmm. they were very happy, so... I know that one person told me the best advice. They actually, 
they uh, they said the best thing that I uh, out of this whole thing is if it's a doubt, it's a don't. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. and that's kind of what everybody has to fall in line with. Do I think it sucks? Yeah, it's a shit stick, no matter how you spin it. But you don't want to be those people, you mm -hmm. know. And I don't know. It's kind of, it, you know, you, you get inundated with it, and that's all that people want to talk about is, mm -hmm. you know, the coronavirus, the coronavirus, which, you know, do I think, do I think it's as, I, I, I don't know. It's above my pay grade. Right. I, but. And, you know, I don't know how serious it is. I mean, no. Ob, you know, obviously, a lot of people do think it's very serious. Mm -hmm. My child has to borrow toilet paper from me because she can't find any in town right now. But um, yeah, I I don't know either. But it's it wasn't worth the risk, you know. No, I no. don't want somebody coming in. That I mean, I work at the schools. I'm around kids all the time. Mm -hmm. Schools have closed now. They don't have the employees working except for the cafeteria ladies. Mm -hmm. um, but. You know, we've been told children are the biggest carriers. Who knows? I could have been exposed to the virus, yep. and I'm just not showing any symptoms, but somebody could come into my store that has a, you know, compromised immune system, and could I pass it to them? Mm -hmm. You know, so, yeah, it, it, if it was my only income, and... And Tanya's, my partner Tanya, her, my business partner Tanya, her only income. And, you know, we probably would have stayed open. Mm -hmm. But um, at this time, we're planning on opening the April 3rd through 5th. Okay. Unless, you know, mm -hmm. unless things get worse before they get better. So for people that don't know, the Pick and Chicks... It, uh, you guys have been open for a couple months? We've been open since the Black Friday, the end of Black November, Friday. yeah. And uh, it's an antique... Uh, antique, vintage, vintage. Uh, homemade, handmade, repurposed. Mm -hmm. um, you guys we, have several different vendors that are in there? Yeah, we have um, 11 vendors right now, I think. Um, we have my husband, Bill, who does metal, metal art. Mm -hmm. We have uh, Regina and Mike Gratted. She does all kinds of crocheting and um, just beautiful, beautiful things. I mean, she has wine carriers. She uh, little girl dresses, um, qu uh, not quilts, afghans. Uh -huh. Mike does bird houses. He has some great bird houses. Um, and then we have uh, Crystal Emanuel and Matt Dyer. Matt does a lot of. Um, I'm trying to think of what they call it. it makes it oh, industrial, mm -hmm. industrial lamps, like out of pipe, and then they add. You know, he's got his Jack Daniel's bottle as the, the really? lamp shade, and yeah, and she does a lot of towels and and that sort of thing. Um, let's see, Tanya, her booth is strictly vintage. She has all kinds of vintage things. Cindy um, Flaherty and her mom Louise Melvin. They find a lot of vintage things. They make a lot of things. Um, Cindy is the starter in Orland for making all the little gnomes. I've seen those. Those are so cute. She does them for all different seasons. And um, right now we have the Easter in there. Um, hopefully we'll get to sell them before <laughs> Easter if we open. Um, Oh, and um, Denise Dressen, she has uh, a space in there, and she has all handmade scarves and a lot of vintage items also. Mm -hmm. Right now, her booth is just full, one whole shelf is full of vintage chickens. <laughs> and then we have Denny and Deanna Rogers, and um, Denny does a lot of wood crafting. Um, Deanna does a lot of um, country style crafts. So yeah, we have a we have a good we have Tiffany Schultz who sells her candles in Love there. the candles. Love Tiffany's candles. I'm I'm thinking in my head, I'm going down each room and each stall trying to make sure that I didn't forget. You didn't anybody. forget anybody. Yeah. Um gosh, I think that's I think that's all. So if you guys ever get a chance, whenever all this craziness is over, you guys might want to stop on by. It's at four oh seven Walker Street, right here in Orland. It's across the street from Napa Auto Parts. It's a cute little little vintage shop, and you guys have everything in there that you could possibly want. Very eclectic, different mm -hmm. items, and in mm -hmm. all different areas, you know. Yep. 
Yeah, all, all different styles and, mm-hmm. you know, it's not all farmhouse. It's not all shabby chic. It's just and a mixture guys, of everything. And you guys have actually had people who have, you know, maybe moving or they're doing an estate sale or whatever, and they've actually called you guys personally and said, hey, come out and yep, we're get always, first dibs. Right. We're always open to that. We like to go out and take a look at whatever somebody has and, mm-hmm. and we'll be honest with you on prices Mm -hmm. you know it's like what we can buy it for in order to make a profit and you know so yeah if anybody's having an estate sale or a yard sale and they'd like to get rid of things ahead of time just give us a call you can message us on our facebook page or um you guys are on instagram also and we're on instagram Mm -hmm. also so you can message us there uh, I really don't want to give out my phone number. No. You, know, you know how I am about I know. it. I've got like 10 people in my contact list. It's like, why do you need my phone number? <laughs> what do you want? Yeah. Yeah. I already have my, my warranty on my car isn't up. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so anybody that's thinking about it, you guys need to head on over. If, even if you guys are just running through town, if people are running through town and and stopping by, people that listen to this, if you want to stop in, 407 Walker Street, right across from Napa, picking chicks. It's an awesome place. Well, and it's um, it's right in the heart. I mean, all of our little vintage shops are all walking within distance. walking distance. Yeah. We're half a block from each other. Yeah, you know, so all of the all of the stores are, you know, you can park and you can go to all these stores, and all of the restaurants are within walking distance. Yeah. Also, can't guarantee all of them will be open. True. But, you know, you can get curbside it's or kind of cut into my meal plan for gonna, the month. I was gonna say, son of a bitch, I have to cook. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh. <laughs> that's so. the only thing that sucked is mm. I'm not good at prepping. I that's one yeah. thing that I've learned is like I, I, I took myself to the store to get some supplies and I walked away with scented candles, um, cheese doodles. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of shit that you know. We'll just fight over. Well, that's, I was going to make a macaroni salad tonight because I fried chicken. Mm-hmm. So I got to grocery outlet and I get the celery and I get the, you know, the sliced olives and went to get the pasta. No pasta. <sighs> it's like that whole giant shelf. I'm like, F it. I'm not making macaroni <laughs> salad. You guys can suffer. I'm cutting up this <laughs> cantaloupe and that's what they're going to have. Well, most of the produce is gone too. Yeah. All the meat is gone. There's no meat in the in the case um like all the bag of lettuce there's still a little bit of that there uh no toilet paper no paper towels no cleaning supplies yeah it's 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 crazy it's getting a little bare no eggs no milk no eggs i bet you the people that have been peddling their farm fresh eggs are they're thinking they charge ten dollars a dozen i know I get it they're like, guess what? Yeah. Effers. Yeah. You're you gonna... made fun of me being a chicken lady. <laughs> now you're going to want it. Yeah. Whatever comes Who's out of my chicken's ass now? is going to cost you some money. <laughs> Who's laughing now? I know. So, yeah, I uh, yeah, I think it's crazy time, but I'm glad that, you know, everyone's being kind to one another so far. I haven't heard too many bad shit, but, I mean, if... Imagine if it was a zombie apocalypse. It'd be every man for himself. It would. My, hus- my husband would have been dead already. <laughs> he, would have, <laughs> yeah. he would have been found in his tractor supply pants <laughs> yeah. and his boots. It's like, yeah. <laughs> he would, he'd be the one that would be fighting over the last Ben and Jerry's ice cream and get shot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Poor thing. Him and his ice cream. Uh huh. Yeah. So you guys got a new puppy. Oh God, Gretchen. Gretchen. What in the hell were you like? Do you sit there and think? I had no part of it. No. I didn't even know it was happening till like a month before it was brought home. And would you rather have a kid? Well, today was my first day off from work for Uh thirty days, and it started out great. You know, I posted a picture. Oh, here's sweet little Gretchen. You know, up on my chest, and I'm watching TV. And as the day got on further, and the more bored she got, let's see. I walked outside. Every time I walk outside and come back in, she acts like she hasn't seen me like in a week, uh-huh. and jumps at my chest. Oh, so I got my coffee cup in my hand. She jumps at my chest, and I've got a bag of groceries in the other. And the coffee went flying. So 
I have a coffee stain on my carpet right now. And then she just turns around and goes, lays down, like... Hashtag worth it. Yeah. <laughs> and so then I thought, oh, I'm going to take a little nap. So I am in the recliner, and I barely close my eyes. I hear this grinding. And I thought, she's just chews on everything. The hot commodity is toilet paper, and, and we get mad when she chews on the toilet paper. She'll go grab the end of the roll and take off down the hallway with it. Oh, no. And dryer sheets. She likes those. And plastic clothes hangers. <laughs> so I hear this grinding, and I'm thinking, oh, shoot, she's chewing on a leg of the dining room table or something, mm-hmm. you know? I jump up, and here she is on top of the dining room table. All the clothes that I had just folded are, like, thrown everywhere. And she's chewing on a red plastic clothes hanger that was up there that I was... So she spotted that. So that was... She got in trouble for that. I yelled at her. She kind of hangs her head, and then she's like in a panic, like, how do I get off of here? Because I don't remember how I got up. <laughs> and then she comes in, chewing on her own piece of poop that she has, <laughs> and drops that on the carpet. So, clean that up. I was like, God, how could that even taste good? You know, you got all this other stuff. Jeez. And so the final one, right before Billy got home, is she went out into the orchard and found a gourd that I had grown last year, a loofah sponge gourd. It's black, it's moldy, it's falling apart, and she just brought that in and chewed it all. (laughs) Surprise! Yeah, so day one is down. We only have 29 more to go at home with Gretchen. (laughs) I will survive. They have to take her to the lake tomorrow and just let her run. There you go. And then get and your maybe car not and call leave. her back. Because <laughs> <laughs> Bill's like, well, she just needs exercise. You know, you need to take her out there and just let her run. And it's like, and I'm going to let her get far enough away uh-huh. and then jump in my car and leave. So. I don't know what happened. Well, and the thing is, she's so big. She's almost 30 pounds mm-hmm. and she's only four months old. And so I think I expect a lot more out of her because she is yep. so big. But, you know, she's in that puppy stage. Mm-hmm. But she's just like a flipping freight train when she comes after you. When, you know, she sees you and jumps at your chest. And, oh, yeah. And you know what a big animal lover I am anyway. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, that, <laughs> that's your game. <laughs> yeah, I love animals. <laughs> oh. But they all love you. I know, that's my big secret at Humane Society Bingo is like, I don't like animals. I know. I just really like bingo. Yeah, I really like to win money, but I don't really care where this money goes that they're making. I don't care if it's for human trafficking. I need a B9. That's right. (laughs) Well, she's a, what kind of dog is she? She's a... She's a German wire hair pointer. We've always had them. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the type of dog we've always had. But my husband hates my daughter's little dog that she got because Stuart is so wiry. Stuart Stuart jumped in the middle of the dining room table a year ago at Christmas in the middle of the prime rib. Oh, God. So, while we're all sitting down to eat, and so I had to send him the picture of Gretchen. I said, could be worse. This thing could have jumped in the middle of the table. Mm. (laughs) Stuart's only a quarter of the size of him. Stuart probably barely weighs seven pounds, and he's full grown. He's like... Yeah. Isn't that just typical? I and, know. And it's always, you're the only one that's inconvenienced, and it wasn't even your idea to get the goddamn oh, thing. God. I know, but if I put him out in the kennel, put her out in the kennel, um, I have to tiptoe slowly mm-hmm. around the house so she doesn't hear me in there. Yep. Because she'll be quiet. She'll sit out there. But as soon as she hears anything, she'll just start barking. Mm-hmm. And so my dad, who lives across the driveway, he says, yeah, he goes... Don't hear a thing from her until I start at my four wheeler or something. He goes, then it's, you know, he says when the pickers were there, it was awful mm-hmm. that she just barked all day long. But anyway, only what eight more months, and isn't that when the puppy stage is supposed to be over? No, what? I was just told two years. Oh, they're two years good old. Lord, I know. Well, just think of it. You could have had a Walter. Oh yeah, Walter. Uh, Walter. Right. Walter's a freak. Walter. It's like they they had. They took a male and female of two of the most annoying breeds and said, have sex, and, and then... And produced... Produced um, this. 
Yep. Shit. Yep. And that's exactly what I thought. Well, apparently, because right before we started this, you didn't have any water. I, I had no water. And it's because your dog went outside and chewed on the water valve and yep. co- turned it off. Turned it off. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mine just eats its own poop. <laughs> <laughs> You got me on that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you work for the school system. You've worked for the school system for over 30 years. 39 years. 39 years. Mm-hmm. And was this, this was kind of a hobby. I want to, I really want you to tell how you got in, how you got Bill into this hobby was mm-hmm. he, he was, he had throat cancer. Right. And, um, nine, about nine or 10 years ago mm-hmm. he did, um, he had been diagnosed with um, throat cancer and he was going through his chemo and radiation and very 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 depressed Mm -hmm. and oh yeah by the way Jeff Gomes I'm really sorry you showed up at the house that day (laughs) for the fireman's (laughs) money drive and Uh you were a little shocked when you saw him in the middle of you know one of his (laughs) yeah Yeah. he had to have a feeding tube and all that so poor Jeff walked in just for a donation for the fire department and like froze in his tracks he was like oh I didn't know I didn't know but anyway he's fine now and kind of back to being his old jerky self again (laughs) bless his heart (laughs) everything's forgiven as long as you say bless your heart yeah bless his bless his yes okay Mm -hmm. um so he was very depressed and at his um, oncology appointment, his doctor said, okay, you know, you need to find something that you want to do during the day. You cannot sit in your recliner all day long and feel sorry for yourself. You need to keep your mind and your body busy. So he'd always had welded, but he welded to fix things, Mm -hmm. you know, repair tractors or trucks or, or whatever. And so got on Pinterest and printed out a couple of metal projects for him to do, just real basic things, and gave him the pictures and said, I want two of each of these made by the time I get home from work today. Which he wasn't happy about. Mm -hmm. I said, I I don't want to come home and see you moping around here. You need to be productive. And so he did it. And so the next day I gave him a couple more new projects. And pretty soon it got to the point where he was having fun and wasn't thinking about what he was going through. So, mm-hmm. you know. That's the difference. And I could take his antidepressants. <laughs> he didn't need them anymore. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. Just, Just kidding. kidding. <laughs> it was his pain pill. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. But, so I think that that's, cause like I said in the first one whenever we were talking is, you know, Anytime that I have a raffle, anytime somebody has something going on where they're trying to make money, you know, every single time I do the Laws and Paws raffle, everybody always asks me, did, Mm -hmm. you know, did Bill throw out any of his, you know, his welding? Do you have a flower? Do you have this or that? And it's very well received. Everybody wants Mm -hmm. it. And Mm -hmm. it's so nice driving through town. And every once in a while, like, it's funny. I remember driving through and and some places you drive by and there's oh that's one of those flowers. Bell's flower that's a Bill's flower. Yeah. There he is. Right down here on Yolo. Yeah. There's one in um in uh, a milk can mm-hmm. with like the three or four flowers. Yeah. He was so excited when he saw that. Oh was he? Well he was so excited he stopped and talked to the people oh, no. to tell them that, that was one of his flowers. <laughs> that was me. Yeah. I did that. <laughs> that was me. Yeah. So because they were really nice. I said, yeah, I bet they thought you were a little strange uh-huh. stopping and They're saying like, that. Got the children inside and hide the women. <laughs> yeah. Got the rifle behind the door. Shotgun behind the door. <laughs> He's so cute. Bless his heart. Bless his heart. He is just adorable. Yeah. He's so, a little gullible, but that's okay. He's very gullible. But he's very trusting. Uh huh. Like I told you the last time, he's very trusting. I think everybody's sketchy. Yeah. You know. You I trust. I question everybody. I, their motives. Yeah. The why they're doing this. Mm-hmm. How? When? You've even questioned a thin Schwanz man thinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you, you liked your product, product so you much, you wouldn't be so skinny. Oh, who yeah. are you? <laughs> <laughs> so, what other hobbies do you have? Um, let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. Ah. I love going 
ghost hunting. Do you? Yes, I do. What about you? I would rather take a dump of my pants and sit in it for a week. Well, no. <laughs> I'm a I've, been, I've been with you. Yeah, I'm a boy. And you would rather sit outside in the dark yes. with the transients. Yes. Playing Candy Crush. Yes. That you would want to be in the building. Yes. Yeah. Completely. Wholeheartedly. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. And here's why. Uh, I don't know why. I don't like it. <laughs> That's my answer. <laughs> I don't like it. It I scares like, the shit out of me. Yeah. And I see it scares you. I find it really interesting. Do you? Mm-hmm. So you do believe 100%. Oh, I, I'm a total believer. Are you? My husband thinks I'm a lunatic. Uh-huh. You know, but... Some of the things that we saw at your shop. I know. I know. And things that have happened there. Mm-hmm. You, know. you did a, a ghost tour in Nevada, didn't and, you? Yeah. I drug Bill on that. We went to, How I was said, that? I'm going to this vintage trailer rally with you <laughs> in Virginia City. You're going on a ghost hunt with uh-huh. me with a ghost tour, you know. It was fun. It was interesting. He can't hear, so Billy So Billy was, like, totally lost on what the people were saying, which was probably a good thing, because he probably said, that's a crock of shit, or something <laughs> like that. You he know? would have embarrassed you with your peeps. He would have, so I probably am glad that he doesn't hear <laughs> very well. But um, it was it was very fun, you know. Um, I would love to go back and do that again, because um, this was just a walking one. I'm going to go where you spend the night. Uh. Oh, God, that was... <laughs> I think I have a anxiety. Going, just thinking about. I think about I have it. something going on that night. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what night it is, but and I'm I would sure clear I'm my busy. calendar. I know. <laughs> It'd be like it's like oh, I don't care if my child is getting married. There it is. <laughs> It'd be like your best friends getting married. You're like I'll go to the next one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Skype me. I'll Some be there. Friends I have. <laughs> I <know>. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go to the next one. Your yeah. kid's first communion, eh, I'll go to the next one. <laughs> yeah, the, um, the most interesting, or probably the time that, the only time that I was scared at your shop mm-hmm. was the time I was there by myself, mm-hmm. and I was in the back room, and um, you had gone to pick up Ireland, said, I'll be right back to you here, okay. So I'm sitting there playing on my phone, and I hear footsteps you know, coming across the the front of the building, Mm -hmm. you know, where the stations are. And I'm like, hello, hello, Monica will be right back. And they're just getting closer and closer to the door. And then I hear like keys on a key ring start jangling. And I'm like, oh shit, somebody's coming in here and they're not responding when I'm talking to them. And about that time, I hear a crash out there. Well, I jumped up, ran out to my car, and that's where you found me. I found you in your car. You found me sitting in my car. Uh huh. And I'm like, somebody came into the shop. I don't know if they stole something or what's going on, but I kept telling them, I was saying hello, and that you would be right there. And you said, I locked the front door. I locked the front door. The front door was locked. Mm-hmm. So we went in together, and this whole, oops, sorry, this whole. A uh, shelf of books mm-hmm. had been thrown on the, the floor out there. Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. Everyone that doesn't know, I used to work at a salon. My parents owned it. It was a Christian Scientist church. It was built in the 1930s. And the front part closed with the door and it had a back building or bu- uh, back uh, like kitchenette. kitchenette type area for a break room. And so you could, you could lock yourself in that room, you know. Right. And, but it, eerie 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 shit happened all the time in there mm-hmm. and it always happened whenever I was either by myself or you know late at night mm-hmm. and it was definitely there were some severe stories in there and there's a lot of people that love shit like that and there's a lot of people that hate it I like it as long as there's a group exactly <laughs> I will not be staying the night in there obviously <laughs> but it didn't really freak me out until you said the front door was locked yeah and then it was like mm-hmm. oh Jesus yep um, and then the last time we did the investigation, and then right before you guys before sold, we it, sold it, um, you know, the guys had all the equipment mm-hmm. going and everything, and I'm sitting in a station, and pretty soon I see this ball of light floating mm-hmm. right across from me, and it looked like a snake with a ball of light going through it, and every time, every time it hit like a hump in the snake, it would throw off sparks. Mm-hmm. 
and it just it did that and it was like I was so shocked at seeing it I couldn't even take my phone out to start recording I don't know if I thought that if I move it's going to disappear or what it is but then I thought you know what maybe it's just because they've got the grid lights going mm -hmm. and it's dark in here maybe it's something playing tricks with my eyes until Scotty looks in the mirror behind me and he can see it and says what the fuck is that <laughs> But, you know, it was, that was pretty interesting. And also when, you know, the first one that we did mm -hmm. with the flashlights. Yeah. I mean. There was, was a lot of crazy shit that happened. That that place was. It was crazy. You know, people may not believe. Yeah. I, I am a total believer. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, it was just, it was fun. Oh, my God. I wonder if Manuel Quesada will let us go over and since he bought the building, if he'll let us go investigate. <laughs> let us have it. <laughs> let us go investigate in. some night. Hey, yeah. the Alta Schmidt house is another one. I'd love to go and investigate that one. That mm -hmm. one would be really cool. That would be. And also, um, I know of someone who just moved into the house that um, when I was probably 15, there was a double murder. Ooh. Um, and they say weird stuff happens in there all the time that, mm -hmm. that they want. I know some. exactly which one you're yeah, talking about. Yeah, I'm not going to say where it's at or anything, <laughs> yeah. but um, yeah. So that might be a possibility in the near future for us. They That would be. Yeah. I don't know if I could handle that shit or not. I, w I would sit out in the car and just you wait. You still have Candy Crush on I your do, phone? Okay, I do. You'll be I do. Right. I went through like six levels that night. <laughs> <laughs> you'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather worry about getting butt raped by some guy in the park and <laughs> go in there i don't want to do it i am not good at shit like that i am not good but there's a lot of people that don't believe in it and that's totally fine I mean, yeah, I mean, that's completely but you watch all the ghost adventures and all that kind of shit don't you you know i don't really watch zach baggins all that much um i think he's a yahoo uh -huh. um but some of the other paranormal shows i do do you? Yeah. I like the ones that people have videotaped things and mm -hmm. and posted them and, you know, my husband and son just roll their eyes when they walk in. Cause They're like, the, it was the wind. Yeah. So. <laughs> it's the weather. It's the wind. It's this. It's that. I don't know. Some of the things that we've seen, there was no explanation for it. Mm. I know. I know. But it was definitely known that that place did not like me at all. Yeah. At all. So. Well, and your mom just used to yell at it and say, oh, yeah. I'll be out of here in a little bit. Leave me Leave alone. Leave me alone. Let me get my book worked yep. out. And then everything would calm down. Mm -hmm. Where me, they loved to... Because she would hear her cart rolling out yep. in the front and the drawers opening mm -hmm. and closing. And... Not anymore. And mm -hmm. th there's never been a problem. So I think it was us. It probably came with us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It came with us. <laughs> yeah. So now all of you that weren't sure if I was a lunatic, ah. I've just confirmed it. <laughs> no, everyone. And I don't give a shit what you think. Nope. It That's makes like, no never mind. No never mind to me. Nope. <laughs> all five of you that are listening. I know. All five of my viewers are. <laughs> yeah. My mom and three of her friends. <laughs> Those were, were fun. And, yeah. You know, the people that we, we do that with are, are mm -hmm. fun also. And we did do a tour around Orland. That was mm -hmm. a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, Doc Russell, he offers a, uh, it's called History Camp. And for all the kids during the summertime, they go over and they start at the Alta Schmidt House. And he takes all the children around town on a little walk and, and teaches them the history of Orland. Well, I had contacted him and said, do you have one? For an adult, you know, we I have a bunch of friends that would love to come and, and take a walk with you. And can you, mm -hmm. you know, up it just a little bit for the adults? And he goes, absolutely. We started at 7 o'clock at night. It was in the summertime. Ended at 9 o'clock back at the Alta Schmidt house. And it was, you know, I learned a lot through that whole entire thing where he he's very informative. And he is definitely a, a man of history in Orland. And he taught me a lot of things about this town. Yeah. Yeah, it was interesting. That was um, that was fun. I mean, 
when you're walking through Orland, downtown Orland, look down at the sidewalk. Yes. You will see imprints, and there. Um, sometimes there's a fork. Mm-hmm. What were some of the other things? There was a horseshoe imprint. There's a horseshoe imprint down on 3rd and Tehama, and I, I think believe it is. I think where there was a stable or something. Yeah. And uh, then... Fork was where there was a restaurant. That's on 5th Street. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's like things... There are landmarks that mm-hmm. from 100 years ago, or not, probably not 100 years ago, yeah. but, you know, many years, decades ago, um, that you never notice because no. everybody's so busy and they have a place they're going. But if you look down, you'll find mm-hmm. things in front of a lot of those uh, older buildings there on 4th Street and is it 5th, the next one? It's, yeah, because yeah. I know the one was on 3rd. Third in Tehama, I believe, and then the other one was on Fifth Street, right across mm-hmm. from uh, Uncle Chong's restaurant. Mm-hmm. And then I can't remember the other. I did think it was really cool to go and see the jail, the old jail mm-hmm. behind the water tower. That right. was really cool. We had an inn. We there, had an so inn there. That was pretty cool. Get a key. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, but no, I, and even if anybody's ever had any type of interest in this town, you know, go on over to Alta Schmidt House. You know, it's located mm-hmm. on. Uh, Fourth in Yellow and right on the corner of the library. Right, right on the corner, right there, and that I believe they're open Friday or Saturday. And said, I'll have to definitely look, and I'll I'll uh, I'll post it down below. And Doc this. Russell will do a walking tour with yes. you. Just give a donation to the yes. Alta Schmidt House, and he takes you yep. all around. And and he's a and, and it, it's really kind of cool because you know that's the generation, kind of like the final generation that mm-hmm. knows. You know yeah. certain things that mm-hmm. we won't we won't be able to know. Mm-mm. You know it's going to be lost with them. So right. take advantage. Yeah, yeah exactly. for sure. But yeah, so no, uh, that was that was a lot of fun. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. So what do you guys got going on with pick and chicks? So now it's just a wait. It's just a wait game, correct? A waiting game right now. Yeah, to see when you know how the coronavirus settles or mm-hmm. explodes or or whatever. But you know we're gonna we're gonna shoot for our next opening for. For April third through the fifth, and hopefully we'll be able to do it. But you know, right now I've got lots of time on my lots hands to go and find things to bring in. I just finished a dresser mm-hmm. and had Bill and BJ haul that up there for me last week. And mm-hmm. we moved a lot of things around, a lot of shifted some booths, and and uh, it looks really good in there. I tell you what, it, it is also a place to where you go in one time, you go back the next time, and it's completely different. Right. There's never, the, you never see the same thing. Right. You know, it changes all the time. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the things that we do ask our, our vendors is make it look fresh and new mm-hmm. in each opening. I think that's you know, Even if you have the same things in your space, mm-hmm. add some new ones and move the older ones around. Perfect. You know, so, but yeah, I mean, we... We're enjoying ourselves, and we are open the first and third Friday, Saturday, Sunday of the month, mm-hmm. and we're open on the same weekends as Andy's Attic, so right across the street from us, you can hop on over there afterwards and say hi to Glenda and Jonna, mm-hmm. and do a little shopping over there also. Keep so it local. Keep it local, especially now. We need to... Yes start supporting all of our businesses here. You know, you don't want to lose some of these, mm-hmm. you know, smaller family-owned businesses and um, just local businesses. I mean, we'll be fine at the Pick and Chicks. Our overhead is not very high. And, mm-hmm. you know, even if we close for a month or two or whatever, Tanya and I can, we can handle that. That's not a big deal. But some of these people that depend on on their stores for their livelihood, mm-hmm. we need to be supporting them. Absolutely. And that's why on my Out and About in Orland page, um, I usually don't let anybody advertise their businesses. It's usually just events or recognition of Orland, uh, people from Orland, um, just so people, just so people will know what's going on in Orland, you know, like, you know, for instance, when Bingo Night is, Bingo mm-hmm. Night, or when the Fireman's Ball is, just it's usually activities and events. But I really think that we that I needed to start letting some businesses for the next couple of months start advertising for their place. You know, we got to keep everybody going. 
Yeah, self-employed people, especially self-proprietors, they appreciate it. and We do our best to keep Pizza Palace going. Exactly. <laughs> I tell you what, Heidi, I am so glad that you guys are still <laughs> offering pizza because... I'm <laughs> taco pizza. Oh, man. How can you not? They have Taco Pizza, Taco Tuesday Pizza every week. If you guys have an opportunity, head on down to Pizza Palace. It's located yeah. on 5th Street. They have the best taco pizza on the planet. Okay, the best way for their taco pizza is... we. I plan a trip over to Chico to La, C- La Hacienda to buy I their salad dressing when I know Game that I'm changer. going to Pizza Palace that night to get a taco pizza. Game changer. I've gotten off work and gone over to La Hacienda to get the dressing and then come over and picked up my... Savage. Committed. Uh, it's, it's good stuff. <sighs> yeah. Scott Hans and Heidi Gilmore, you guys are amazing over there. We yep. appreciate you at Pizza Palace. And uh, if anybody gets a chance, you guys need to head on over. I think it's like, I think they have they a... They do Taco, it used to be Taco, I think it's Taco Monday. I think they do Is their, it Taco Monday? I think that's what they do. They do the special on their uh, Taco Pizza on Monday night. Uh-huh. How did we get talking about Heidi? This I is know, supposed to be this is store. your thing. And then here they no, just steal it now. Uh, no, I, 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 no you're right. It's a Taco Tuesday. It's Taco Tuesday. Uh, $28 plus tax. It says, come on down, grab one to go. So if you guys get a chance, they will also, also um, they'll be offering $3 off any large to go pizza, not valid on any specials or take and bakes, but that's a hell of a deal. I think everyone, anytime you guys uh, are thinking about it and a chance to not have to cook would be... Oh, amazing. Amazing. I know. You guys all have to stay open or I have to start cooking. I know. <laughs> then Billy's going to think that this is a tradition. He's not like, this is that enough great. that he, you know, he knows I'm off for a month and he's going to expect home-cooked meals. You know? Oh, God. Like, yeah, crap. Well, hey, everybody, we're going to wrap this up. So don't forget, head on over to Pick and Chicks uh, first weekend in April. You guys really, it's a gem of a store and it is amazing. Like I said, it's located at 407 Walker Street. Um, before I end this, I want to give a special heartfelt thanks to, uh, the hard work of Jennifer Shermer for CK Price School. Uh, she has been working diligently and hard. She's been doing it. Totally. Yeah. All since we, for the sake of the kids. Yep. She is our head cafeteria lady over at CK. Mm -hmm. And right now the school's being closed. Schools are still offering lunches. Yes. And um, the kids, you know, or and their adult, mm-hmm. or older brother or sister, if the parents are working, um, can go to the school and still receive a lunch, a free yeah. lunch, you know, to take home with them, you mm-hmm. know, because obviously we don't, you know, want everybody hanging no. around together. So, yeah, it's um, kind of a grab and go thing. So I, I really um, want to make sure that uh, I extend a. a a huge shout out to Jennifer Shermer of CK Price. Mm-hmm. That school is definitely. They do this. They're doing it at CK and at the high school. Are they? I believe you can go to either one. Okay. But um, you know, yeah, you got to give these cre- ladies credit. I mean, the rest of us are all yep. off on vacation, or not really vacation, I guess. Mm-hmm. Kind of a forced staycation, and um, they're still they're on the front lines. They're working on the front lines. Yep. So sure Jennifer Shermer. All the cafeteria ladies at CK Price, this is for you, mm-hmm. and we appreciate you. And it, but I do have to say, our Mill Street cafeteria ladies are over there. Also, are they? Yeah. They're, so they're all you all also. the cafeteria women are working. Mm-hmm. You know, so it takes all of us. It does, you know, and, and it's terrifying. It's, it's scary, you know. I've seen kids in the. I thought we were gonna wrap it up, huh? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't talk about the school. You know how you get going. Um, but, you know, the kids. I, it's We have a, a lot of kids that get treated better mm-hmm. at school than they do at home. Let's put it that way. Nice and sometimes school. the only meal that they get is at school. And a lot of times the only two meals they get are at school. Mm-hmm. And um, I've already seen a couple of them that at the store that come up and grab me and we've only been closed since Monday or to, for two days mm-hmm. and I saw two of them this morning and it was just like a oh, familiar face and somebody who's nice to me you know so yeah. it's hard you know our teachers are, are very worried about 
the kids having to be at home or be at home by themselves, you know, with maybe a fourth or fifth grade sibling, mm-hmm. you know, because, you know, parents can't stop working. No, I, I, you know, same here, you know, but I work from home. That's a good thing. Talk about a collapse of, of, you know, the whole family life if they have to stay home with the kids mm-hmm. and no income coming in and. And I don't care how many programs there are out there for, you know, to supplement your income right now. Number one, you don't know how long it's going to take to get your money. And number two, it's not going to be as much as what you're making if you're working. Uh Nope. So, um, you know, there's, we're doing all that we can do by putting, um, all the information online of what the kids should be doing at home, different, um, sites for them to go to. Uh, different uh, the ways that they can log on to their computers for the information the kids are doing for the programs the kids are doing at school you know but it's like you can only do so much mm-hmm. and then you have to hope for the best I guess you know and well get through it yeah you know but we do I mean this this isn't just fun and games for us we do worry about the kids oh absolutely we worry about them you know, That's some of some of our understand. some of our high risk ones. I really worry about. Mm-hmm. So, so well, we appreciate you, and we just want everyone to know that we're we're with you on this, and we will do what we can to make sure that this is an easy process. And you know, like you said, shop local, keep local, keep everybody in your thoughts and prayers. Lord knows, you guys will be all in mind. <clears throat> and uh, Jennifer. If you're listening to this, we're thinking of you and all the ladies from all the schools that are at the at the front lines helping out, uh, keeping our kids fed and making sure that their needs are met. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, we, uh, we appreciate you and mm-hmm. we love you for it. So yeah. give everyone a big pat on the back. So Go Orland Unified. Go Orland Unified. <laughs> all right, everybody. This is Monica with No Conditions. I want to thank Vicki Wackerman for coming in and hanging out with me. This was a blast. And give us five stars. Yes, five stars. <laughs> <laughs> but like I said, check out Pick and well, Chicks. All five of you. <laughs> I know. Give us five stars. There might be six. Yeah. <laughs> check out Pick That's and right. Chicks. That's right. I'll tell Tammy about it. So Tammy, she'll, yeah. yeah. She'll get on there. Yeah. Uh, don't forget Pick and Chicks, 407 Walker Street. Head on over. Uh, first weekend in April. Like I said, if you guys have any questions or you guys need to get a hold of them, they're available on Facebook and Instagram, and they'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you guys have. Yes, we will. Awesome. Also, on uh, No Conditions, check us out on YouTube. Follow the link and Facebook, Instagram, I'm on there. And yeah, give me a like and subscribe. Don't forget. We'll talk to you guys soon. And thanks for hanging out.